Mina-san, konnichiwa. This is David. And Mina. And um, tonight we're just going to chatter a little bit about um, Iron-Blooded Orphans, mm. G Teketsu, mm. the new-ish Gundam show that's mm. currently going on. Mm. Um, we haven't done videos in a while. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, part of this is, is that uh, my iPhone camera is borked, um, and it's kind of a hassle to get it replaced. I'd have to go down to Tokyo and uh, schedule an appointment, and... They really do uh, mostly do appointments during the week, and God, I just don't want to. Um, so I haven't had the chance to do that. Mm. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the kits that have come out for Iron Blooded Orphans, though. So, so review and discussion. Yeah, everything. yeah, yeah. It's it's um, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B, or and alcohol. Uh, yeah, yeah, and you know we we are drinking tonight. Um, Got com. Kampai? Kampai? Yes. Mm. Are you drinking Japanese whiskey? Um, no, actually, a Di Sereno on the rocks. Oh, but right. I am drinking it in my um, my map of the side colonies <laughs> cup. <laughs> totally can't see, but trust us, it's there. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a really lovely cup. <laughs> anyway. Mm. So Iron-Blooded Orphans, we are sitting on like something like 17 episodes now. Okay. Um, How many in total? It's probably going to be 25. 25. But um, it just got renewed. If you um, are not familiar, um, if you have not been keeping up on these sort of things, it got renewed for a second season. Mm. This is a big deal um, because this doesn't really happen very often. Happen to Seed? Um, technically, no. Technically, yeah. Seed was a season and then they had a sequel. Okay, sure. Um, which is a little different. It um, it, it is it is it is a little different mm -hmm. from a uh, positioning standpoint. Um, it is considered a different show, um, Gundam Seed Destiny, as far as um, Japanese broadcasting goes. And Seed Destiny kind of stars Kigali. Oh, uh, Kigali is pretty important to it. It's it's um it's a little complicated. She'll but... come up again later, so I thought I'd mention her. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about Kigali. Um, so it did not necessarily happen with Seed because Seed got a, a sequel. Mm -hmm. um, sure. It did happen with Double O. Right. Double O had a second season and an ending movie. Now, Double O's second season wasn't right on the cusp, right? Like there was a period of time between? Um, a year, just a normal mm -hmm. year okay. period. Um, so, you know, there's that. Technically, Build Fighters got a sequel because it got Build Fighters Try. Right, which is a different series. Again, it was completely different series. Um, so aside from Double O, that's what we got. Because like, the original series um, was its own season. It almost got canceled. Right. Um, and then um, Zeta Gundam happened a few years later. And that is a different series. Completely different. I mean, it's still in the same continuity and everything, but it's different. Right. And then... Um, we get shortly thereafter Zeta, double Zeta. Mm -hmm. um, and then that was all complicated. Is that, one, is that the one that was better than we expected? I like double Zeta. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's actually really good because it, it's um, it's a good balance of lighthearted and dark. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really like it. But um, So technically, Iron-Blooded Orphans is like the second se series to get uh, renewal. Right. Um, which is kind of cool. It, it is doing well. So. It is not UC. No, no, no. It is not it the is same a... universe as Char and Amaro. And... No, no, no. So it would be a good pickup if you want to get a taste of Gundam but don't want to invest in the whole main series. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good taste. Yeah, we'll, yeah, yeah. You know. um, yeah, yeah. It's not, it's, not, it's not affiliated. It's a side story, um, an unrelated universe in the same way that G Gundam, Gundam Wing, uh, X Gundam... Um, seed and double O R and mm. age and try or build fighters. Um, and it's not like, um, you remembered try or age. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I remember it technically. <laughs> um, I remember it by name. Not on the list. Um, no, it's not the, um, but, yeah, um, and it's not shoehorned in to the UC timeline the way that, um, turn a Gundam is. Okay. Um, turn a Gundam is technically, Right. A UC story, but, but it's, it's like phew, way off. Right. Um, and the the new one, the Reconquista, is technically kind of UC. Oh, okay. No, yeah. n the other new one. The, the other new one. The real hip. Like, oh, oh, Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt is is just a side story. 
Okay, right, right, right. Um, if you haven't seen Thunderbolt, the first episode is up. You can purchase it um, mm-hmm. in the United States, anywhere else, um, on uh, Daisuke.net. Um, and very like. It's it's an no, it's, no, you liked it. Yeah, I liked it. I liked it. Oh, yo, Daisuke, Daisuke. Yeah, yes. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yes. The, um, or or Daisuke uh, is I guess would be the pronunciation um, if you're you know reading it without knowing that sort of thing. The but it's it yeah. yeah the website it literally just means very like mm-hmm. um, or like a whole bunch. Okay, but you so you liked. The one episode you saw of... Of Thunderbolt? Thunderbolt. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I think that it was very arty um, and interesting. Like, it did a lot of visual storytelling yeah. and a lot of, like, secondary sound storytelling. Yeah. Um, I th- If they keep that up, I think it'll be really cool. Yeah. Now, whereas all of the things that he listed as reasons he liked it are reasons I did not like it. <laughs> I found it slow. I found it self-important. Mm. Um, and, like being jazzy for the sake of being jazzy rather than because that's kind of its heart Mm -hmm. um so i i found it very boring i lost interest real quick and i don't maybe something about the art style sets me off a little bit i don't know oh it does have that sort of like uh, almost like cowboy bebop ish thing going on yeah and you know i know strike me down anime fans but it's not really my thing I'm sure if you like that kind of thing, you'll love the hell out of this. And yeah. I, I invite you to enjoy the hell out of it. But it's just not for me. Um, yeah, and it's it's um, it's it's interesting for a few ways. But it's also it's it, it's also going to come out slow. Yeah. Um, it, it's getting like an episode every six months, roughly. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, Orphans. Orphans. Chi Taketsu. Um, we're up to about episode 17. Mm-hmm. I really like it. Yeah, me too. I am super fond of it. Um, I don't just give blind, really positive endorsements very often. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I really love the series. Ironically, I did not like the first episode. <laughs> um, I, I Yeah, yeah. The first episode, it felt like they were trying to cram in as many tropes as possible to kind of yeah. like... And, but ultimately, it was to get them out of the way. Like, you just, it, just shove them all in, get them done, they're, you know, your metric of trope is over, now you can move on to doing whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> it felt very, like, generic anime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, at that point, which, eh, that's not for me, I'm not I'm not a big anime person. Right. Um, so it felt very generic and very boring. Um, I was not very impressed. Um, but then basically, after the first episode, it started picking up. You just sort of power through the first episode, and suddenly you get to see how smart the kids are, and then it gets exciting. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's um, so it's it's about kids, but not in the way that um, the previous shows have been about. We um, and... Uh, we're like the, the classic series you've got a, a crew of kids and you know bright is or captain bright is 19 kind of a kid yeah. but he's really in charge like right. there's an official status there right. um and with uh, with all the other ones you typically have adults around and stuff mm-hmm. but this is really about kids yeah. um who have been thrust into a position and have to sort of band together um and it's it's very neat because they're they don't they don't behave like cartoon kids. Like, mm. they don't be- behave like stupid kids. Well, they're not written like dumb adults. No. They're, <laughs> they're not dumb adults. Yeah. They're, they're very clever. Mm. They do make mistakes. They are impetuous. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, they, they are very smart, very capable kids mm. um, who just really, really have these wonderful relationships. Yeah. It's really about family. Mm-hmm. Like, that's a... Um, theme that's sort of punched you in the face lightly night and nicely you're punched in the face nicely over and over again by the theme of family yeah and familial responsibility too because that's like one of the characters his sort of main thing is what am i responsible for you know i mean that's that's tech, that's all of them really yeah every one of the characters has a responsibility issue right but the big brother orga yeah orga his whole thing is really like Okay, now I have to become the man of this family. Yeah. What does being a patriarch really mean? And he's got some examples of how that's supposed to go and, you know, whether or not that's going to work out for him. Yeah. So, um, right off the bat, it is, um, it starts off set on Mars. So, this is going to be spoilery, but 
I don't think we're telling you anything that's not telecast in the story pretty fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or even in um, e- even in like the intro sequences. The sure, intro sure, sure. sequences are pretty spoilery yeah. if you're paying if attention you to it. If you hate spoilers, I'm sorry. Goodbye. Um, yeah, but we're, we'll keep it light. And mm. this is just basic stuff. The execution is really what matters yeah, here. Yeah, I think so. Um, if, if you explain to me everything that's going on, I... It wouldn't matter to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I would still be able to watch it just the same yeah. and get the same value out of it I because so. just seeing the kids in action and seeing what's going on is yeah. really cool. Um, but basically, they start off on Mars, um, which is an interesting thing because that's a first for Gundam. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some space contact stuff in Double O, um, but it's complicated. Um, there are literally colonies on Mars right. in G Katsu. This is further out than the UC. If yeah. Was. Yeah. They only ever got so far as stations up in the sky, up in the sky, sciency. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so a really long week. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Also, we're drinking. I mean, mm. You know. So there's that. Mm. Quickly turn off my screensaver. Keeps popping up here. So you're gonna cut this? No. Okay. That's only a couple seconds. Okay. There we go. <laughs> okay so starts off on mars which is right. kind of neat um and it starts off in basically this worker colony yeah and it's a terraformed mars too like, yeah it's, it's terraformed a... um and pretty pretty reasonably terraformed um and they're doing hard labor yeah um it is uneducated kids yeah doing doing hard labor and it's it's kind of awful um and they don't want to do it anymore um, because it's it's terrible. And um, instead of, like, in a lot of stories where, you know, the hero would come and save them, they decide, okay, we're going to turn everything around. Yeah. Um, and they have a, um, a Gundam, uh, the, the Barbatos, which is basically a generator at this point. Um, right, right, right. It's been strapped up to machines, and it's running them with its um, with its reactor core, mm. um, and that's that's kind of cool. So it's like they're using the means of production. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's Marxist fantasy. Um, so that's why he's into it. Yes. Um, so, I like, think, yeah. Sort of a side note. Hi. Goodbye. Um, as a side note, I think it's interesting because we, you know, we tried to watch Rainy Keys then. We didn't really get into it. Yeah. I and mean, we were talking a little bit about it. And I think the thing that I noticed was that um, the kids in Reconquista are children of privilege. They're in an expensive school. Um, they're very. They've well, been groomed they're for greatness. They're and groomed for greatness. And so I kind of don't give a crap about them. Yeah. I mean, that's terrible, but. I like orphans. I like hard luck stories. I like things that are related to my own upbringing. I mean, I didn't grow up on Mars, but... Or an orphan. Or an orphan. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, not from means. Right, not... right, 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 right. Um, so they, they take this Gundam and they fight back and they leave. Mm-hmm. Um, they leave Mars. Um, and they have this young woman, um, uh, what is it? Um, Cadelia. Yeah. Um, Cadelia. And she... Um, is very important back on Earth. Um, and basically, her whole thing is that she wants to help Mars have a revolution and free itself. Right. Um, she's going to a voting block to talk to them about getting Mars liberated. Mm-hmm. And she is the maiden of the revolution. Mm-hmm. And she's this important figurehead. And she's being backed by a mysterious blonde guy in a mask. Uh <laughs> Yeah, um, it's it's complicated. It's uh, it's it's. I would say um, if you are familiar with only some Gundam, but mm. maybe not all Gundam. Um, if you've seen Gundam Wing, um, it has that sort of level of layering going on. Yeah, it's very political. Um, yeah, there's a lot of complexity to it, um, and that's that's neat. It's you can you can definitely dive in there. Um, but the story is, is so far that they are going from Mars to Earth. Um, everybody's trying to fuck them over in the process yeah yeah everybody. they they keep getting exploited because they're capable and desperate right um so they're they're very and everybody sees children yes so they assume oh no problem we'll just wipe them out of the sky but they, haha, little do you know they're psychotic children with big weapons and and super cool plans they um, that, that too right they they do some heist Reminds action that's children. awesome mm-hmm. yeah um dave's basically a gundam sure so, I mean, that's that's basically the premise of the show so far. And now they, they're helping to 
foster this workers revolution. Yeah, they're kind of tricked into being in the middle of a revolution and mm -hmm. now shit's got real, so now they're going to decide what side to be on. <laughs> Episode 17 was tense. Yeah, I think that's the one we just watched yeah, yeah, recently. Yeah. But I think so. But yeah, so that's, I mean, that's, that's basically what the story is. Um, now there's more than 10 episodes left, so the whole thing could turn and it could turn into a romantic comedy for all we know. Yeah. Um, but I don't think so. It's, it's also been very like, um, sort of like, it grabs you very well. Uh, yeah. It has, it has some really strong emotional moments, um, which is, you know, it's par for the course. Gundam does that a lot. Um, but I think it's particularly effective here. Yeah. Um, Somewhere around the funeral. Yes. When you hit that funeral, if you've got dry eyes, then you mm. might be a... Um... You might be a reploider. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Just um, check to see if you've got a lizard tail. As long as and that's not a spoiler, because it's Gundam, everyone, everyone dies, dies, whatever. Um, I would not say that this season is... Or the, so far that it's been heavily Tamino'd or anything. Like. No, actually, I would... Um, it's... It's been pretty reasonable Nobody, um, as far as that goes. I don't feel like anybody who's died didn't, like, <laughs> didn't deserve it. Not deserve it, Well, there was it, a place for it. Yeah, there, there was, was a story place for it. It felt appropriate. And, I mean, if you are familiar with the original series, mm -hmm. um, there's a death pretty reasonably early on um, that is also very impactful and feels right. Um, to and, remind the kids that, oh, yeah, mortality exists. Yeah, Yay. this isn't a joke. This isn't a game. Right. Um, which, is, which is cool. Although we get the feeling that a lot of these kids know that. Yeah, they knew it nice, going in. Yeah, but it's nice to see it on camera to tell us mm -hmm. that they know that. Yeah, and it's it's um it's also it's sort of um it's sort of unique because um you know you have like real normal kids in the form of like Amaro and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And then sometimes um uh, whenever when you go into like double O, um those kids are fucked. Um like they are in a really hard situation. Um they have been raised as weapons of weapons, war, yeah. yeah. And um so they they are like really soldiery and part of their their conflict is that they're trying to uh, to learn themselves. They never really got to be themselves. Mm. Um, but in this, these these characters are in a very hard situation, and they never really saw value in themselves. Right. Um, so they human debris. Yeah, yeah. They they. Um, what they say. It's what they call themselves, and it's 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 very sad because these are kids that they think that well, we're going to die young and nobody's going to care, yeah. and. Oh my God, that's that's hard. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's just the conceit. You, you feel like at the first, at the beginning that you're getting handed another um, main character sociopath war toy kind of. Mm, yeah, you know, kind of like, like Setsuna. You feel like you're getting getting a Setsuna. You feel like you're getting a who's the kid in um, Wing? Oh, Kiro. oh Hiro. Hiro. You feel like you're getting a Hiro. You're getting that kind of like. I've been completely shut off from a life being raised to be a weapon. Yeah. But that's not what he is. And I, as soon as you see the turn, it's like, oh, okay, yeah. cool. This is a little bit different. Yeah, he's he's definitely um, he's definitely not turned off or anything like that. Um, he has. He's hardened. Yeah, he is. But he has normal human emotions. He does, and he's funny. Yeah. Um, he's subtly get funny. Humor. Um. He, he, hits the space princess in the face with her privilege a couple of times real early on and you're like all right yeah it's, <laughs> okay. it's good stuff and it's yeah he's not just aggressive needlessly and standoffish or anything like there's that there's no i'll kill you no 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 <laughs> never get over that line ever <laughs> it's <laughs> it's it's it. awful um <laughs> But and and that's that's um that's that's a really great thing. But also he is um he's he's hardcore. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, oh. Like there's no fucking around no. with um Mika. Um he is he is an intense character. Um there's a lot of like, did he just do that? Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. And there, I can see how that would work, but oh my god, <laughs> why would you do that? There was some controversy over this yeah. um uh, earlier on in the series. Right. The, there's a bit where um, Mika kills some prisoners. Yeah. Um and there was some That's, controversy over it. And that it. was the way the media spun it, right? Oh, um, yeah. this character in this child show murders a bunch of unarmed tied up um um prisoners yeah but that's not the way it's, it goes in the episode it, at all it's really not and in context it makes a lot more sense yeah. it works 
Um, and you totally understand why he's doing it at that point. Um, and if, if anything, he does it to save lives. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely to he, save lives. His own, their own, and also the like many of the people who he could have needed to kill. Yeah. He didn't because of the people he did kill. Oh, that's, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there is no trolley dilemma for Mika. No, 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 no. Um, he pushes the guy on the tracks, that's all. Yes. Um, okay, so that's... Google it if you have no idea what the hell Yeah, the trolley dilemma. It, it, <laughs> Google it and then forget about it. It's a psychology it's thing, it's weird, and... Yeah. <coughs> anyway. So that's that's the basics of the show. Mm. Um, as we said, you can watch it on Daisuke.net, I believe, is mm. the website. Yeah, it's Daisuke.net. Mm. Um, you can also watch it on YouTube. If you're outside of Japan. If you're outside of Japan. You can watch it out. You can only technically watch it on Daisuke and outside, outside of, Japan of Japan as well. Mm. Um, we just looked it up for you. I think there might be another place, like Hulu or some shit. Mm. Um, but you can do it definitely on YouTube, uh, on the Gundam website, the mm. Gundam Info. Um, you can also do it on Daisuke. Um, Bandai loves you. Yeah, Bandai loves you. They they want they you want to see you it. They want you to share the Gundam. Um, and that's that's kind of cool. And it is it is um subtitled. subtitled? Yeah, there's going to be a release um that's going to be dubbed. Huh. Um, it's the first show since Double O to get a dub. Did we watch it dubbed or subbed? Um, Double O. Yeah. Uh, I I don't know um, subtitled probably I I don't know. It's it's exciting to me because I'm now at the point of listening to Japanese that I can't get all of the dialogue but i can get like the intermittent casual yeah. stuff um so good listening practice it is good listening practice <laughs> don't oh. get the dubbed so um i don't know i i think we did watch a little bit of the dubbed for double o mm. um it was okay yeah. and the one that they're doing for iron-blooded orphans is apparently a pretty big deal like they're putting a lot of effort into it, the localization so it should be a pretty good thing yeah. um, if that's what you're into uh, we've been watching it subtitled because that's what's available. Right. Um, so it is it is available. You don't have to pay for it. Um, it is out there. You can watch it because Bandai is awesome. And, you and then know, tell us what you think. The doobly do. Yes, please. Um, so, I mean... A lot of times, uh, at least outside of outside of Japan, um, the shows are perceived as sort of um, commercials for their gunpla. Yeah. Um, you know, they don't have to charge a whole bunch for it. Like, you can buy the DVDs if you want, but they have them on YouTube and shit now. Right. So, um, the if idea only is... all commercials had such good, you know, <laughs> storytelling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it is a wonderful, wonderful story. It's very well written. Um... <laughs> This is also this is also um, written by a woman, right? Um, which is kind of a cool thing. Um, she is very prolific. Um, she's written a lot of other stuff. Um, yeah, let me pull up um, a little bit of her. It was uh, Mario Kata um, is her name, and she's done a lot of she's stuff. Not. Yeah, I pulled up her. Um, I pulled up her her um, list here of credits. Like Vampire Knight, Black um, Butler, Magical Girls Club, um, <laughs> Loop in the Third. Oh, she does a uh, series of Loop in the Third, like yeah. not the original, but yeah, and you know some AKB forty eight stuff. And Dead Girls. But there's a that whole bunch cute. of stuff here. Um, she's she's done a lot of work, and um, this is the first time she's done you know Gundam. Mm. She's the first time she's done this sort of story which um you know i saw some skeptics story, story but i i think it's awesome i think yeah. it's really it's really good really well done. um she really gets gundam um, yeah. she gets what makes it work yeah um and it's got a, a very unique um identity yeah um I, I, a lot of times the side stories like they really fall flat g gundam we have an entire talk about G Gundam. If you haven't seen it, you check it out. Um, it's on our channel. Uh, it's a weird show. Um, it has its really good points. <laughs> That's an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> um, G Gundam is weird. Yeah. I don't like Gundam Wing. I know a lot of people got into Gundam through Gundam Wing because in America that was, I think, the first one that came over. I, I don't know. I watched them when I was a kid. I watched the old series. Yeah, somebody so will, I, I don't know. Somebody will tell us. Yeah, us. tell us if you want. Angrily. Um, but Gundam Wing, I didn't really like it. Yeah. Um, I think that the, it, it was too, like, caricature. Um, like, the characters didn't really feel real, like, at all. 
to me. Um, and they didn't feel relatable. No. Um, and who gives a crap about these kids? Yeah, yeah. I, I had absolutely n- no investment. You in know, them. I think the space princess in that series was really good. She's the best character. She is, and it's and unfortunate. Zex. Oh, um, sexy, yeah. Yeah. Sexy. But yeah, and she, yeah, she she remains the most interesting character. Mm. Um, and then X Gundam fell flat. It was not very good. Uh, I don't think you've seen X Gundam. Um, it's not very good. It's okay. Yeah. Um, the main mobile suit from it is kind of pretty. I like it a lot. Is that the X? The, the, yeah, the Gundam X. Yes, the one with the solar panels. Um, <laughs> the, I know my plot. Which evolved into um, the Gundam X Mao right. in Build Fighters. Right. Um, <laughs> solar panels. Yes. <laughs> that is that is reference to Birdemic. Um, that's not a Gundam thing. If you haven't seen Birdemic, it's... You should. You should. It's good. Get it out of your system. Um... So, uh, yeah, X Gundam. Um, and then you've got like Seed. A lot of people, uh, Seed is very popular. Um, and a lot of it basically got a whole new generation of, into Gundam here. And has the best of the plucky space princess. Or it has the best of the space princesses because she is officially a plucky space princess. Oh, well, Kigali. Yeah, Kigali is. Yeah. Of, of the, the chick, because all of these series tend to have the chick. Mm-hmm. I think she's my favorite because she does shit. Yeah. You know? Well, and also she pilots the Strike Rouge. Right, which is your favorite kit. Probably, yeah. Mm. The Strike, as far as, like, the baseline builds, the Strike is probably my favorite, like, generic Gundam. Oh, right, no, you like the What's-A-Faces better. Uh, uh like the, like, the Strike Freedom and stuff. No, like the thing that her team pilots, the... Oh, the Estrays. Yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a big Estray fan. Yes, so um, many. Uh, yeah, I love, I love them. It's okay. not hundreds. <laughs> it's like a handful. Okay. Like, the like the RG, HG, MG, PGs, uh, SDs. Multiples of a couple of them. Yeah, a few. Yeah. Um it's like that. Yeah. So um <laughs> the um basically as far as side stories go, I think it's really, really strong. Um Double O is probably still my favorite ish, but they're close. Uh, and you know, Build Fighters is amazing, but it's also like its own animal. It's mm. um, way, way different, um, and it's more like an homage. Um, homage. Yes, homage. Homage. Um, so <laughs> that's how you can watch it. Right. Um, Gunplaws. Yeah. Gunplaws. Gunplaws. I don't have a whole bunch of them. I haven't been buying as many Gunpla lately because mm. I don't have a car. Mm. Um, that's complicated but and good for us yeah it's good for us it means i walk a lot more but my town does not have easily access to gunpla and but you found that sick yes i've, I've been mail ordering gunpla so things are turning um, around so it's getting real micro reviews yeah this is the hg barbatos i really like it mm-hmm. oh. <laughs> hg barbatos now it's in 3d watch mm. stop that no <laughs> Um, it's very simple, very poseable, mm. but it's also very different. Um, the way that it is built, yeah. the, the inner frame is lovely. It's, it's a really cool looking kit. It's very... So, and this is an HG with an inner frame. Um, more or less. Yeah. Okay. Like you can take off most of the armor. Um, it's not going to stand completely, um, without any of the armor pieces. Um, because... I'm the same way. Yeah. Uh, because of like the way the feet work and stuff but it is pr- it is one of the most customizable in that regard um and that's because of the weird little gimmick um all of the um g Takatsu kits um are basically interchangeable right um you can take off like the shoulders and put on the shoulders from another kit you can do the same with the head the the skirts um the legs whatever um and this is not in a build fighter um hack your own robot kind of way this is in a they all have the same there's skeleton there's seven of these left and when one of them is destroyed they put the pieces on the new or 27 or 97 it's it's a very finite number of them yeah well there's there's a finite number of gundams and they the the kids just tear them apart and put them back together because they're all in the same frames right um, which is super cool. I love that. Um, but that's the HG Barbatos. Good story reason for why you treat the game now. Yeah, yeah, why you design them in that way so mm-hmm. they're customizable. It's cool. Mm. Okay. And it's great because the kids repurpose them yeah. and, like, modify them and customize okay. them. Um, and just and gives not, them their not own not just in putting a um, Zaku head on a 
<laughs> no, they don't pull the double Zeta there. Um, I love that. I'm sorry. No, it's wonderful. It's a, it was a really clever moment. Okay, so this is the the one one hundred Barbatos. It is not an MG. Um, it is much cheaper than an MG. Um, it's about twenty dollars um, or two thousand yen. So it's about uh, fifteen, sixteen, sixteen dollars. Those foil stickers are not terrible. No, they're not. Um, as far as foil stickers go, um, a round piece like that. This is really nice and uh, really poseable. It's it's, it's very stable, very strong, very sturdy. He's going to look good with other people's parts on him. Yes. And they have, they are supporting them. Um, there's going to be a few more of these already. Um, there's a Graze the and a Graze Kai. Um, and there's a couple more. A Gushin, um is coming out. And so, it's specifically so you can buy them and, and Frankenstein with them. them. Yeah, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, and in fact, the, the Gushin is the next one that comes out. So and cool. it's a two pack, kind of. Um, it comes with one skeleton, and then it comes with one version of the Gushin and one another version of it, um, that look completely different. Yeah, they're so, like totally different robots. Yeah, you gotta like pick and choose which parts you want to put on it. Um, mobile frame, sorry. Yes, mobile suit. <laughs> um, and and so you get that kit, you get parts for two robots and one core, so then you can take the extra parts and, and put them on your barbatos. Put them on the barbatos or whatever. Or whatever. Yeah. Um, and that's super cool. Um, so that's the 1100 line, mm -hmm. which is exciting to me. I think it's really cool. They aren't doing MGs, but they have what is called um, a high resolution model of the barbatos, which is like, uh, what, 16,000 yen. Um, well, about $140, $130. Mm. Very expensive. Mm. Um, but it looks really pretty. designed to frustrate people who really like set. Like, yeah. It's an MG, or it's a thing, or it's a PG. Yeah. Why are you adding new things? Well, this the the one one hundreds are just one one hundreds. They're they're not they're not graded. Um, and we we did get some of those with um, oh, Gundam Seed had them, and I actually like some of those for their era. Um, but it's weird. Um, because they're definitely not MG quality. They're basically just larger HGs. And this you, is a step up. When you were know. building the Barbatoses. Yeah. Barbatoses. Um, Barbatois. Barbatois. Barbato. Yeah. Whatever. Um, you were saying that it felt like a very different thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because you literally build the skeleton. Like, that's a big thing. Um, you build the skeleton and you're putting armor on it. Um, it's not like... There's not like a lot of armor pieces that you have to put together and make happen. Mm. Um, the, it, like it's literally just you have the skeleton and then you arm it. Uh, it feels different than any other gunpla I've ever done. So um, if you've been building a lot of gunpla and they're starting to blank like blur together, like uh, didn't I do this already? Oh no, that was this other model. This might be a nice change of pace for you um, to refresh your palette. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, here is the grays commander type. I didn't get the standard grays because it's not that much different, and I like the commander color better. Um, the bad guy ships are really cool. I like yeah, the grays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the bad guys are cool. The, yeah, they are. They're 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 the kind of cool of people. The couple of token. What are they called? Um, Gallerhorn. Gallerhorn. Yeah. It's always the Germans. So, again, I mentioned the war. This one is a. Uh, this one is a different frame than the Barbatos because it's not a Gundam. It is it is the equivalent of like a Zaku, um, but it is kind of neat. There's a lot of little stuff going on. Um, I think they're lovely. Um, I've got one, mine on my desk right now. Um, they do have a one one hundred version of that, but it's I have not all he has on his desk. That's like one of ten, maybe. No, no, there's not even ten on my desk right now. I have um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, a... nine, ten, eleven. Okay. I have a couple of astrays. I've got with a PG unicorn up there. Um, you should show them the thing you got from Gun in Front. It's totally off oh, topic, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's it is, there it and cool. it's so cute. Um, if you, if you, um, this is, I got this at Gun in Front um, at, um, in Tokyo. And it is the HG um, Strike Freedom, mm. except it's on this little stand. And the reason it's on this stand, other than it looks cool on your desk, is that at Gundam Front, there is a giant full-size Strike Freedom cut off at that point. And you can, like, get into... Um, the head. Yeah, you can get into Kira Yamato's um, cockpit and stuff like that and it's take pictures cock. in there. Yeah, so it's, it's neat. Um, I, I think it's a lovely little desk trophy type we have thing. To do that next time. Yeah, we will. It was just there was a line and yep. yeah. We'd already spent a lot of money. Yeah. Um 
so that was a total aside. Um, the oh, and the um, Hyakuren is the other one that I have here. Um, it's the only other one that I've gotten from the um, Jitaketsu line. And so that's far. piloted by one of the team of women, right? Yes, there is a ship full of women. Um, the captain is a man, um, and it's a it's a weird story. It's a big, beautiful poly family. Yeah, it's not like. He's not like a creep or no, anything about it. No, they all it. just really are into him. Yeah, um, and there's a fun dynamic going on there. So that's it's it's interesting it makes seeing. Makes me happy. Yeah, it's cool. There's babies. Um, yeah, there, <laughs> there's there, an episode there, with babies. There there are babies, and that's cool. Um, it's it's a neat thing to see. It's yeah. different, um, and seeing you know, poly lifestyles that aren't just assholes it, and Mormons. It's not abusive. It's not yeah. weird. I mean, it's, like it's weird. Well, it's, it's a weird ship because of women it's a who are ship. all on one dick. But... Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's a ship full of people who are all affiliated like that. Like, mm. you know, I I would be at someone's throat. Um, the I'm just saying. <laughs> one um, of me is enough, is what you're saying. Basically. Mm. Um. So that's cool. Um, and that's that's all the kits that I've gotten so far for the the line. Um, there's there's a graze. There's um, uh, the Monrody, which is this sort of like big green frog thing. thing. Yeah, I think it looks um, cool. Um, the Gushin is also a big green frog looking thing. Um, but there's there's a few of them, and I, I like them so far. I think that they're um, they're very interesting. Um, they have unique looks, like this um, the Hyaku Red is definitely like. It is definitely, yeah, it's definitely samurai armor. Um, I have no idea where that piece goes. <laughs> oh, no, it's on her side skirt. Look at side skirts. Yeah, she has these huge side skirts. But yeah, it's definitely it's definitely samurai inspired. Um, it is this sort of like bulky thing going on. Um, the cutest little busty chick who pilots it like a monster. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, she's, she's awesome. Um... So, what are some downsides? I don't know. Have there been any really? Yes, um, I can tell you the one you complain about, but you don't realize you're complaining. Oh, the the, <laughs> the I, this is not complaining. This is not complaining. It's just weird to me. That's mm. all. So there is a span of like six episodes, or maybe five. Maybe five. Um, there between like twelve and seventeen ish. Mm. Uh, in the episode count, where there are no Gundams. Yeah, the politics gets really hot and heavy, and like things are very dramatic, and uh -huh. it's like a big turning point in the story. But there's no Gundam fights. Yeah, there's no robots smashing robots, and you're a little like, what? Wait, what am I watching? Yeah, like occasionally they cut to the team repairing some of them <laughs> and, and repurposing them, which is interesting. It's just weird. That's all. I don't mind it. I mm. actually like the idea that you don't need Gundams in every episode. Right. Um, like, I think that it is um, it's sort of important that you have them in the first episode. Yeah. Um, and that you have them periodically, um, but it doesn't have them for a very long stretch. And that's pretty much unheard of. And it's interesting because it gives you a sense of, shit, it takes a while to fix this stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just like, mysteriously, off camera, everything is fixed, don't worry about it. They shoot you know flew in a new piece and everything is fine yeah they're out of commission for a while they've got to do other shit for a while because that thing ain't out there killing people right now mm -hmm. well and and they're um they're stationary uh right. for this point they're on mars or sorry they're on um are they quad the, oh they're oh the door colonies they're on a uh, they're <laughs> <Dort>. on a <laughs> they're on a um they're on a space colony your mom's a dort and and they're... Is that a real word? Like, does that mean something? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> you just um, say it like, oh yeah, of course, a dork. I just, that's what they're calling them. <laughs> I, they're, it might be a real word. I'm a little drunk. <laughs> um, I don't know. So anyway, they were on a colony and they've been there for a while. Yeah. There's no fighting on that colony. Like, you couldn't make a Gundam fight on There's it. no Gundam fighting on that colony. Um, yeah, they, they have some fights. There There's, are some there, shootouts there and stuff. There is some drama. Uh, and there are some, you know... You know they're 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 pretty action packed kids, um, yeah. and there's a political revolution going on. Yeah. Uh, workers up evil, <laughs> um, and this is not a this is not a friendly political revolution. Yeah. <laughs> um, so 
Yeah, this is um, it, it it is it is a little weird. What uh, I, there's been a couple of fan service moments, I guess. But so, I, I think they're really benign. Yeah, yeah. I um, with them. They're not in my face. They're not in my way. Yeah. So I, I don't feel like the show is not for me because those things keep coming up. No, and like they do it to uh, Orga and Mika as well. <laughs> Well, um, yeah. There's lots of like he's inexplicably well, not inexplicably. There's a reason for them to be shirtless in the robots. Okay, it's not just for funsies. Mm -hmm. It's because they've got these big inserts in their spine. Yeah. So in order for them to hook to the robot mobile suit. Yeah, mobile suit. Thank mobile you. Mobile suit. Yeah, they're mobile suits. You. They have to jack in physically with these spine fingers and. It's like the Jacks in the Matrix, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. But so, in order to facilitate that, they are often totally explicably shirtless. shirtless. <laughs> yeah, that word. Uh, Mika, totally Mika pilots um, shirtless a couple times. Yeah. Um, so that's a thing. Like, and it's 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 interesting. I mean, for cartoon characters, I guess they're appealing. They're cute. And, they're, they're, they're cute. And they're, cute. They're, they're they're cute for teenage girls. Man. Yes, I'm sure. If I were and teenage, teenage gay girl, boys, and and you know, teenage in betweeners, you know, whatever. Yeah. Lots of teenagers. Yeah. <laughs> um, that that aspect of the show is not for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that's cool. That's yeah, cool. But there's very little on the other side. Like, there's one or two shots of, what's her face? Cordelia. C Cordelia. Cordelia. Yeah. That are kind of like, oh, maybe that was fan service. But it's so fast, it's like, it couldn't have been fan service. Who the fuck is that for? Um, and then what's, uh, I can't remember her name, actually. One of the, oh, um, sure. one of the Tewaz the, girls. Yeah, the... the the plucky lady pilot in the pink thing in the samurai armor. No, no, well, no. She that that one is um the the dark skinned woman. Oh, yeah. Um, she is she is not really shown off in that way a lot. You, I mean, she's, she's shown got, off a little like, bit. She's got a cute, gorgeous figure, mm -hmm. and like clearly she's very sexually active with the 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 leader. Yes, but it doesn't feel cheap. No, it's just like okay, that's. That's what she looks like, and that's who she is. That, that makes yeah. sense to me. The other it pilot written by on a that. woman. It feels like it. I don't know yeah, it does. Gonna... The other, the other, the other one of the, well, one of the other pilots on that ship. Um, yeah, the blonde. Right, right, right. She's, but she's also like really sexually aggressive. Yeah, which is cool. Um, it it fits. It's not mm -hmm. like we're taking advantage of her by watching the camera when this goes on. It's more like no, she's putting her butt in your face. Oh yeah, she's yeah. Presenting, and she's, you're just gonna have to deal that. with it. Um, camera's not taking advantage of her. Mm -mm. Um, and she, Agency. and she, so she's in this, um, this super huge poly relationship with that people on the ship. Right. Um, but she's also into one of the, um, one of the Tekadon pilots, right. one, of the, one older of, the, ones. of the teenage boys. Um, she's a teenager, uh, like an older teenager. She's probably like 18 or something. Yeah. But I feel like he's, he's up there too. He's yeah. He's probably about that age, but regardless, um, she's like all up in him and yep. it's not a problem. Like, yep. that's so cool to me. Yeah. Um, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, but we don't know. That could come to something. Like, there could be a moment where she decides between the two of them. But I think that that would be, like... I, I don't think it would be that dramatic. I think it'll just be a choice she makes rather than an abandonment on one side or another. Yeah. No, I don't think that's going to be a big thing. Yeah. Um, there's also a weird bit. Um, I, I didn't think it was weird, um, but a couple of other people thought it was weird. Um, with So one of the... Um, one of the the enemy faction essentially um, is betrothed to oh, a young girl. I do think it's weird. Yeah, like I I could see where that that perception is coming from. Basically, um, it is a sort of like princely figure, and he is betrothed to a, a younger girl, like she's like twelve or some shit. Right. Um, and he is oddly close with her. I don't think that it's a particularly sexual thing, though. No, it's just weird. I think that it's no weirder than it is. It arranged, is an arranged marriages marriage. are weird. Yeah, that like, is there's no weird. getting around it. That is weird. It's totally a garbage practice that you know is terrible and you know awful people. And do we're it. supposed to be seeing the baggage that these two characters have to deal with as a result yeah. of an unfair arranged marriage. That's that's the part that I think that makes it a little less weird. Mm -hmm. um, is you know I I don't think it's for me it wasn't weird because you know. I don't think he's into her as a 12-year-old. No. There's no indication of that. 
there is a suggestion that he's manipulating her. A little, I guess. And it was just like a weird one-off moment where he smiles at a weird time mm -hmm. that could have been anything. Like, it, it just... The vibe I got in that scene was meh, ugh, ugh. But yeah. it doesn't feel like pedophilia. It doesn't no, feel... Because he no. feels... It feels mm. like... This is his best friend's younger sister, and politically speaking, he's going to marry her someday. Mm -hmm. And he knows she's weirded out by that, because she knows that there's a huge age gap, and he, she sees him mm -hmm. often surrounded by women his age, mm -hmm. you know, which I, you know, teenagers. Yeah. Um, and she's just at the cusp of becoming a teenager, so it's... It's she weird. feels weird and inadequate of because course. she has to be married to him, but you know he's clearly interested in girls his age. Right. Um, so it's it's this weird thing where like he, I feel like he's like mostly just trying to reassure her yeah. and trying to build her up because he it knows that they're thing. sort of don't in this together. It. Right. Yeah. Um, so it's it is weird, but I, I don't think that it's like non contextually weird. I think that the show acknowledges that it's weird. I think so too. Um, and that's important. And it doesn't just feel like it's like. So my first kind of glimpse of it, my thought was like, okay, this is from some kind of genre of, like, they're, they're pulling from some genre of manga that's specifically that older, younger, younger person, older, younger, sexy times, creepness thing. Yeah. But the more that I see it, I, that, that's not the vibe I get, mm -hmm. but I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I'm curious to see how they'll handle it in the future, but no. Um, so yeah, like, I don't know. I don't, I, I, it, to, to search for negatives is really hard for me, um, because I, I really like it. I think that it's mostly very well handled. I really don't like the Space Princess. <laughs> I, I just don't. Cordelia. Um, I, I like her. I think that, like, particularly, like, now, um, she's... It, it could go, it could go either way. It could, it could. I think that now she's making a lot of really important decisions, and she's doing a lot of really cool things. It just took 17 episodes for her to actually make a real decision. Because, so basically, the, the, my problem with her is that she's this symbolic thing. She's mm -hmm. this pretty blonde girl who's going to be the reason that everybody's okay with Mars being independent. And we don't really ever get any, like, like... What is she actually going to be able to do other than stand somewhere and make a speech and that will magically free Mars? Well, that's her thing. Like, that's her whole point is she's got to <laughs> learn what it means to not... Like, she's got to learn that being a symbol is not enough. Right, but, like, it's so naive that she just thinks that that's what's going to happen. Yeah. That, like, it makes me want to just well, throttle her. She's she's a person of privilege. Yeah, and she's learning and, that. And the story keeps telling us that. And, like, it's clearly within world, world that that is her issue. But, I mean, man, one of these days, I just want to see, like, the political woman character just being, like, badass the whole time. Politically badass. But put her in a fucking gun, that, too. Like, that's... Okay, you know? so, so, I mean, Kigali pilots quickly right. and seed uh, and is awesome. Yeah. But, um, in ironically, you, you haven't finished it, but in Gundam Wing, yeah. um, the, the main princess is that. Yeah. Um, like, and, she I, is super, super cool, super important, um, and outshines everyone else uh, <laughs> very I, quickly. I even kind of like the the pop idol princess from the one series. With that was also C. Yeah, I didn't mind her because, like, what she was doing was underground. You could tell that, like, there was a lot of political maneuvering that she was doing in mm -hmm. addition to sending out broadcasts saying, let's be friends. There was more to it than just that. Mm -hmm. And, like... So, 17 episodes in, we find out that she's kind of being duped, or somewhere along the line, we can tell she's totally being duped. Oh, she's been duped hardcore, yeah. She's totally been duped. She's really, they, they used her naivete yeah. against her. No question. At this point, I am hypercritical of the series because I need to see her take, some, take up some shit. Like, she's made some token gestures now, we can see that she's like, oh... Oh, reality. Hey, that's kind of creepy. And, like, they're clearly she's making some decisions. She changed course. That was a big deal. Only if she then proves to have understood how big a deal that was. Like, I don't... Yeah. I'm not clear yet that she really understood that, that that decision was one that changes the course of events. Oh, sure. Also, she recruited the media. I think that's yeah, a big deal. And, and, you know, God knows I, I love hashtag... You know, yeah. I love any kind of revolution that involves the media, but like, I don't know. I'm I'm super iffy on her. I I would like I I thought maybe she would be a super interesting one because we got hit with all of the 
um, handshaking privilege nonsense. Like, we're like, oh, okay, that's going to be her story arc. Yeah, that doesn't change overnight. No, it doesn't. But, you know. And I, but I think it is changing now. I hope so. Uh, in, in a lot of important ways. I'm not tossing off the show. I'm not saying that it's not a great show. Even if she ends up being a shallow, to-be-rescued princess, I don't care the rest of the series is good enough. But I would like her to be crazy strong. I would like her to just come out and manipulate. Because all of the, the the boys on the ship and the and the, the, the other group, the, the lady pirates, mm -hmm. um, they're clever. They're so smart. There's so many instances of like, ah, oh, that's what they were doing that whole time. Ah, I want to see that out of Plucky Space Princess. Like, I absolutely want to see, oh, okay, she figured out what was going on real quick, and she manipulated back, you know? Mm. But maybe that's just, everybody has their kind of fan service. That's fan service for me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, um, I, I feel already, I feel spoiled, though, because, um, you know, last Gundam that we watched was Gundam Build Fighters Try, um, mm. which had probably the bestest female character ever, period. Um... She is awesome. Femina? Femina. Okay, all right. I'm just making sure. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. a lot of women in the cast. There are, so. there, are, there are, but no, Fumina was amazing. I would call her a space princess. She is. She's the leader of her school club, which is basically in junior high school the but same thing as being a princess. The difference is, is that she's a leader from day one. Um, yeah. And, like, it's not even just a political position. She just is like, okay, we're going to make Gundams <laughs> and we're going to fight them. You guys, come here. We're going to do this. <laughs> Um, so you she, get back here and then her whole arc about how you know <coughs> it's sometimes it's best to do what you are best at not supporting other people yeah. is fucking phenomenal i don't have to be a support role um tell little girls that a plus yeah so you know i i um i feel sort of spoiled coming off of that mm. um but yeah i would like to see i would like to see more with her i mm. like i don't know i <sighs> The show is um, very strongly paced. Like, there's a ton of momentum. Yeah. Um, I think there's probably eight episodes left. Uh, maybe right. seven. Math. Um, something like that. I, I don't know. I don't know offhand how many episodes there's going to be. Probably 25. Probably seven okay. more episodes. They've got a lot to do. Mm. And, like... I've, there's so many threads. They do and they don't because they're, the they're going to have series. a second season, but like they're they're going to have an arc, um, and like I want an arc. This evolution or the 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 workers' revolution here has to go somewhere. Yeah. Um, and like I don't think they're going to end it on a perfectly low note. Um, no. So it's got to change. Like a lot has got to happen. Yeah. Um, and so I'm afraid that maybe they won't have enough time to develop with <laughs> the characters uh, yeah. more, yeah. but. You know, we'll see. That's still three and a half hours of content. And Gundam is pretty notorious for being able to pack a lot into a small space. Mm. Oh. oh, and the romance is good. Oh, yeah. I don't I don't care much for Plucky Space Princess, but her romance is okay with it's me. It's adorable. It's um, very cute. And, yeah, also... It redeems that character for me, ironically. It does. Um, I also think it's really cool to see um, the uncomfortable... Um, you know, protagonist character who is not a total buffoon in that regard. No, yeah, he is not totally unknown to women. They are a yeah. species to him that he will only ever treat like an idol. Yeah. No, no, no. He gets chicks. Yeah, yeah. Like, like the, maybe he doesn't get chicks, but he understands chicks. The relationships with, um, with, in, in, past Gundam stuff has been weird. Yeah. Um, like, Amaro's whole thing um, with, like, Sela and stuff is weird. Mm. Um, and then, you know, he, he, you have, like, in Double O, um, Setsuna with the... Um, God, what's her name? I can't remember. The, the, the space princess. Yeah, the, um, the the actual literal princess. She's a ground princess. <laughs> Sorry. She's yeah. from Earth. The desert princess. Um, yeah, she's from the desert. So it's totally different. Um she, that is a that is a lesser romantic relationship. That's like a well, weird because thing. Because it doesn't ever blossom into anything romantic. It's he treats her like an idol. He treats her like a Well, he 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 yeah, she's a she's a symbol um to him because he can't really acknowledge um he can't really acknowledge a life without violence. Until um, he does. Until he does, and Spoiler. it's because of her. Spoiler. Um She sang a song. 
that fixed him. Or at least it was magical. It fixed cup. children. It, it fixed did not fix ch- him. It did fix him. It did. That's why he goes back there and he lands a ship and then there are flowers. <laughs> Watch the show. It's I'm serious. It's I think you're talking about something that happens in the second season. I'm talking about the end of the, the movie. Oh, well, the end of the movie. That's The movie doesn't count. The movie, is the movie definitely thing. counts. It's his own thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, there are flowers. There's flowers and children singing, and then there's magical love, I guess, and Einstein. <laughs> you're, you are compiling a lot of show into a very, very s- simple version of that the end is true love can only be expressed through einstein now you're mixing in g gundam no the quote <laughs> is from einstein isn't it yeah yeah the quote is from einstein at the end of double yes See? um but it's not about true love it, it's it's just about peace there are flowers it must be about love <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, out of alcohol, we better end this. <laughs> yeah. So we've been blabbing for about an hour. If mm. you haven't seen, if you haven't seen Iron Blooded Orphans, and you're even remotely interested in Gundam stuff, check it out. Um, it's free. Um, give it at least a couple of episodes. If you don't like the first one, I would suggest it. Um, it, as, as I was saying earlier, it's basically Mar- Marxist fantasy. Um, it's 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 really really different, um, but in a lot of ways, very fundamentally the same. Um, and because it's standalone, it's an easy investment. Yeah. 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 You don't have to even know anything about Gundam or anything like that. And people all the time ask us, oh God, what Gundam series do I watch if I want to get started? Where do I even begin? This would be a place to begin. That would yeah. be reasonable to me. Yeah. The, te- the technical answer to that question is anywhere but Build Fighters. <laughs> um, and I would also. Uh, I think you could start with Build Fighters and go the other way. You could. I, think I you wouldn't could. do it. I didn't I wouldn't. want to watch UC until I watched Build Fires. I had no interest in the UC. Yeah, I guess. But you have to You have to have seen other Gundam to really love Build Fighters. <laughs> okay, he's like, wrong. You can tell him that in the comments. Yeah. Uh, like, you saw Double O beforehand. Uh, so you, you were familiar enough with it that, that you had little, aw, cool moments. Um, you wouldn't have had those yeah, otherwise. but I think you could do it the other way. I think you could watch the other series afterwards and go, oh, that's what that was a thing for. If you remember every little element, like, if you remember all of the little cameos and stuff. Maybe I do. Um, the guy with the ice cream. I know him. That's <laughs> sure. Uh, yes. Um. Why is he in a shower? <laughs> Yeah. Speaking of fan service, see the series is a long tradition of fan servicing out its guys. It does. It does. Long, long history. Um, Tamina knew where it was at. Yeah, I think he did. I think he did. Um, so we're gonna end this. Mm-hmm. Um, I will try to do more reviews in the near future. Yeah. Um, I got to figure out what's up with my phone, yeah. um, or you know, load up the camera or some shit. Um, I don't know. I will I will make that effort. <laughs> if there are any um, talking video type things where uh, we can just do it in front of my computer, that um, we will take recommendations for that in the meantime, um, because we like to drink on the weekends and talk about bullshit on camera. And I think in the near future, we're going to be talking about some of our tabletop games. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because a- if you like Gundam, some of them are very close. Yeah, yeah, we have actually. If you're uh, if you're listening this far in, um, we have a game called Why? Yeah Apotheosis Drive X. Um, it's a tabletop game in the vein of like the Dungeons and Dragons that sort of thing, uh, but it's much more like narrative driven um, to tell the types of stories that you would see in Gundam. Um, so it's really, it's fun stuff, um, and you can find it pretty easily. It's called Apotheosis Drive X. Um, you can find it on DriveThroughRPG.com very easily. Um, yeah, so we're going to close out right before an hour. Um, right? Hurry, hurry. 58.37. Hurry. Uh, <laughs> um. Matane. Matane. Matane.